Welcome back to the Troxy and Limehouse, everybody. Our next fight of the night is in the ring. It's 10 three-minute rounds between Ben Jones and Martin Palagi for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Featherweight title. There's the tail of the tape, age difference between them. Jones, the taller man as well. He's got more defeats on his record, Palagi, but just the one that was against Marco McCulloch, and this promises to be a good contest. Let's get it underway and go to our MC, Mark Schmidt. McDonald, the referee, boxing in the family with the McDonald's, brother of Jim McDonald, trainer to James DeGale and others. And Palagi against Jones. Palagi in the blue and white. Ben Jones from Crawley has brought a lot of support up here tonight in the yellow and black shorts. And this should be an entertaining one. It's a great opportunity for Jones. You know, when he's in the continental title fight. Well, he's down there, Jones, and he's cut it's as cut well. There's blood leaking from a cut just by the corner of his right eye. He was caught, I think, just by a stiff left hand there. He was slightly off balance, maybe, and was put down, so he's given the count, and he is cut as well. First glance, it doesn't, to me, look too bad. The blunt's running clear of the eye, but there is some damage there, and certainly not the start that Ben Jones would have wanted on the seat of his pants after just a matter of seconds after making a very, very quick start. Falaji is a good fighter. I spoke to him the way in yesterday and he was very confident. He said he hasn't been watching tapes of Ben Jones, that he wasn't too bothered about his opponent at all. Strong amateur schooling for Falaji as well. 220 fights, nearly 200 wins. What a disastrous start for Jones. He's really got to gather his thoughts now. If anything, just, just calm down, get yourself into the fight. Well, he hasn't got great memories of this particular ring. He was knocked out in less than a round by Stephen Smith here not that long ago, and he caught a right hand there from Paul Argy as well. He's quite fortunate, the cut is quite high up. It's not near his eye. It's more on his cheekbone. It's the blood run down his, ran down his face instead of near his eye. And again, Falaji just gets in close there. I'm assuming that that damage was done by a punch from that cut. It could, of course, have been a head clash. It's a kind of cut when you look at it that seems more likely to have been inflicted by a punch. Well, 
Kalaji's made a good start here. He really has. He looked crisp. He looked sharp. Getting his punches away. And that left hand again there, just backing into the ropes. He's doubling up with a left hook to the body. This is impressive stuff from the man in blue. He is. He's very confident. He's well scored. He travels well as well. We know he's just... This has only been beaten once. Jones being encouraged to try and use some feints to make his way in. He has won titles, English Super Featherweight title, the IBO International Lightweight title, WBO European Super Featherweight title, but things have not really gone his way in the last couple of years. He lost a couple of fights as won his last four, but trying to get back into some kind of title of contention, which he is in now, but the blood continues to come from that cut, and it's a real weeper, isn't it, on the it side is. of that eye? I think he's fortunate, like I said earlier, so he's on his cheekbone. Um, but like he's had a disastrous first round. Well, into the second round of this fight at featherweight between Ben Jones, Duracell Ben Jones in the yellow and black, and Martin Palagi in the light blue. Jones picking up a cut to the right hand corner of his eye, really, in the first round. And having a look at it in the corner between rounds, it doesn't look good. The doctor, the ringside doctor, is having a very close look at it. And it'll be interesting to see whether the corner have managed to seal it up, to shore it up. It's a real art to treating cuts, but the blood is already coming from it again. Ben Jones has shipped that first round 10-8 and with the damage to the eye as well it could really hardly have gone any worse for him that's a good right hand though from Jones yeah, he's come out much more confident second round hopefully he can get himself into the fight establish you know he's got such a great work rate Ben Jones is hopefully he can you know step on the gas and get into it good right hand from Paul Archie just gets through again there just a straight backhand comes all the way through Imagine that fight against Stephen Smith, which didn't go Jones's way. He's been in with Lee Selby as well over six rounds. Tasted defeat then as well, but felt that he could have got a draw out of that fight. He actually was offered to fight Vassil Lomachenko on Lomachenko's professional debut. They had a few people lined up for that top rank. In the end, they went with Jose Ramirez. But Jones was absolutely up for it. He'd signed the papers. It was for good money. Unfortunately for him, it didn't end up happening. Right hand followed by rapid left there from Pelagi as well. He switched out for there briefly. And he looks a good fighter, doesn't he? He's very well scored, as I said in the first round. You know, switching as well to Southpaw. Got great footwork, great balance. But Jones is pressurising him, you know. He's having a little bit of success. It's a great opportunity, you know. He's 33 years of age, so he's really got to give it his all, and I'm sure he will. Second left hand, again there, just finds a target from Polagi. Born in Slovakia, boxing out of Prague these days. His father was a really good fighter, multiple Czechoslovakian amateur champion, as was as is Polagi himself. You can tell that the way he's scored, the way he moves. But Jones is pressurising quite well this second round. He's shown a better defence. There's a good, good return to the body from Jones, it's better. He needs more of that. He needs to unsettle Pelagi by being putting the pressure on. Good left hand there from Pelagi again. And this is an entertaining fight. I tell you, and I've noticed one thing as well. When Pelagi throws his shots and comes forward, he hangs his chin quite high. That was a little bit low from Jones, but didn't really get through. 
that one, that cheekbone looks a mess. Into the third round, Van Jones cut and down in the first round. In the gold and black, the man from Crawley, the man who's brought the support tonight up against Martin Palagi in the blue. Born in Slovakia, fighting out of Prague, and this is warming up into a really, really good fight. I just get the feeling, maybe, Mickey, that Jones and Jones's corner possibly know that with the ringside doctor looking over their shoulder all the time, that he's on borrowed time, maybe, with that cut, and he's got to get something done here. Yeah, he could be. I just think, you know, he's now settled into the fight. I think he's got to use his pressure because that's what we know he's good at. He's dipped a few good body shots in, in the last round and a half. I think he's got to do more of that. But Pilates just seems so confident even on the back foot. He's throwing very elusive single shots. I think Ben's just got to pressurise him and make him work that much harder than what he's doing now, which is better for him. I think he needs to just close the gap because from distance he's, he's, he's getting hit with him slashing shots, which make the cut worse. Well, that's better from Jones, got to work on the inside right to the body and then threw in the uppercut as well. Palazzi just trying to use his feet, throws in the one-two. Jones just kind of crab-like, working his way forward behind that tight high guard. Palazzi holds those hands a little bit lower, relies more on the reflexes, sticks in that right hand. See Palazzi throw from the waist, you can see that, you can see that chin hanging every time. I think you and close the gaps, hit him downstairs and bring him over the top. I'm sure he'll have some success. But again, the blood streaming down his face. I mean, how disconcerting is that? When you feel it, you feel the blood running down. It's not affecting your vision too much, but you know that something's going on, something's wrong. I think that depends how you deal with it. I think, I think in all fairness to Jones, I think he's, he's handled it quite well. Some fighters obviously panic, but I think once you're in there, you know, you know, you know the doctor's going to look at you, you know the referee could be looking at you all the time, so I think he's got to get on and try and... Good right hand to the body there from Jones. The crowd enjoyed that one, but Pelagi fires back. And this is a real blood and thunder fight at the moment, it really is. And Jones on the inside there just lets his hands go. Pelagi just bouncing on the balls of his feet, but that mouth is beginning to hang open a little bit. I think maybe he's starting to feel the pace. Jones is setting a terrific pace in this one, particularly in this round. That's what I was saying, get him downstairs. Falls the pace. Good defence from Jones in the back foot. I think he's just got to stay on top of him. Fork him down. It's better from Jones. He's having a great round this round. That give him a lot of confidence. Again, Jones just bangs away to the body. Pelagi with those hands held low. Great stuff.
Well, into the fourth, and that was a better third for Ben Jones in the gold and black. Cut them put down by Falaji very, very early in that first round. As weathered things pretty well, and doesn't seem to have let the cut affect him too much. There was a fair bit of blood coming from it. Difficult to get a really good look at it to see how wide, how deep it might be. But it doesn't really seem to be bothering him. And just signs in that last round that Falaji may be. He's feeling this high pace that Jones is wanting to set, but as I say, that bloody comes back with a rapid one-two, followed by another one. Jones with a swinging wider punches. It's been fought a frantic pace this fight. I think Jones is definitely better when he's on the front foot than being the aggressor. I think he's got to be the attacker, and he, I think he's, he's got to take the play away from Pelagi. Like what he's doing now, pressurising him, pushing him back to the ropes. Well, this is good stuff from Jones. He's been relentless in this round. That right hand looked like it might have been slightly low to me, but he's working the body, they're moving up to the head. He's tucking up well, too. He's just seesawing this fight at the moment. Pelagi, of course, had the excellent start. We've been very encouraged by seeing that cut. Going Pelagi is turning southpaw. Just fainting there, Jones, trying to find a way in before letting that right hand go. Pelagi launches a right of his own. Again, just sucking in some air. Bangs those gloves together. He's doing an awful lot of bouncing on his feet. Martin Pelagi wasting an awful lot of energy in between right now, in between the gaps. Well, they arrived on Wednesday. Pelagi and his team were late for the weigh-in yesterday, actually, because it took them an hour and a half to negotiate four miles across central London, which is fairly standard, I told them, which left them pretty astonished. But he certainly turned up on time tonight, got off to an absolutely fantastic start. Goes to the left of the body there, Jones answers straight back. Pelagi, no, very, very confident. Dropping his hands. Do you think Ben's got an edge forward more? Good skills there. Gonna check the vacuum. Jones again just looking to try and finish this round strongly. Well, into the fifth is scheduled for 10 between Ben Jones and Martin Pelagi, the WBO Intercontinental Featherweight title on the line. And Jones has had a good couple of rounds. Pelagi, you're always looking to move, isn't he? He is, and um, Jones has certainly got himself back in the contest. Just feel with the edges a bit more forward. He stays busy. I think he'll take Pelagi definitely out of his comfort zone. He's very, he's like a super confident Pelagi. You can see even the way he's on the ropes there, hanging, hanging his chin high, quite high. This way, I think Jones has got to be busy. Just take him out of his comfort zone. Well, Pelagi almost inviting him in there, just hanging back, as you said, just leaning back into those ropes. Rolling that shoulder across, and Jones again is staying busy, goes to the body, misses with the uppercut, misses with the left hand as well. 
Uh, one fight that Paul Archie's lost was over 10 rounds of Marco McCulloch in Belfast, that for the vacant WBO European featherweight title. Lost that by unanimous decision. McCulloch, a good fighter, picked up a surprising loss actually recently. Just come back with a win following that. I'm sure Jones looked at that fight and seen the way how you've got to beat this man. He's got great skills. That's a thick, good right hand there from Jones. That's what I'm saying about hanging that chin to why. But he's got to capitalise on that. He's got to really step on the gas. Jones is keeping that upper body moving. Elijah just standing there with those hands down. He's still trying to keep those feet moving. Again, just trying to bob and weave on the ropes there. I think right on those reflexes, keeps those hands low still. I think when Jones has got him on the ropes, I think he's got to dip, dip him chest downwards and forget about his head. Like, like attack, attack the body. He's like that now. I'll stay there. A flurry of punches from Jones. And he's keeping busy. The greater output is coming from the Crawley man. Recovered well after a pretty terrible start. It wasn't a damaging punch in terms of it didn't scramble his senses or really wobble him, but it did obviously cut that fragile skin around the eyes. 